Two volumes, your boy, the AK Bat, Chad Elliott, the atheist killer man, Mr. 530 in the building. Look, this is my new video. This new video is a reminder to all agnostics. Check it out. I would like to take the time to remind agnostics that either, you have two choices, either there is a God or there is no God. These are your only two options. There's nothing else. It's either A or B, and one answer is definitely correct. Just for the record, this is no false dichotomy because it's a fact that there is no other options but these two. So, let's take a closer look at this. Agnosticism is basically a neutral position. Agnostics basically sit on the fence and say, I'm not sure if there is a God or there's not a God, but I'm withholding judgment until more evidence becomes available. Now, Herein lies uh, my issue. If you only have two possible answers, let's say A or B, and one of them, let's say B, is proven to be illogical, irrational, and have no evidence, then naturally it should make you lean more towards the only other possible answer, which is A. It doesn't mean you have to fully jump over to one side of the fence right away, but it does mean that if you are interested in pursuing intellectual honesty and truth, you should be leaning more towards one side. The way you decide to lean on the fence will determine if you define yourself as an agnostic atheist or as an agnostic theist. And again, you only have, remember, you only have two possible answers. And you can know with 100% certainty that one of these answers is correct. Now, we know true atheism by itself is an invalid and illogical stance because there is no scenario in which someone can ever know with 100% certainty that God does not exist. So an honest agnostic sitting on the fence searching for truth is forced to lean. So which way should they lean? Again, I remind you, you only can lean towards A or B since A or B are the only two possible answers. An example would be, in the next five seconds, I'm going to disappear into thin air, or I'm not. It's, it's a 100% fact that either this is going to happen or it's not. So, your two choices are A or B. You can be an agnostic and say, I'm not sure, but since you know one of the answers is correct without a doubt, and you want to be intellectually honest in your pursuit of truth, you have to decide to, to lean either more towards A or B. So then you will define yourself as an agnostic A or as an agnostic B. Now, to figure out which answer is more plausible, you have to evaluate A and B independently to figure out which is more logical, rational, and has more evidence. So, let's just say A represents me suddenly disappearing into thin air in the next five seconds. First of all, there's no evidence that um, that can or will happen. It's also irrational and illogic, illogical to accept, accept that even as a possibility. So then we need to look at answer B, which represents I will not disappear into thin air in the next five seconds. Now we have evidence that B is correct and true, but we also know that it's rational and the logical choice. So if pursuing truth and being intellectually honest is my priority, I would have to lean more towards B, and therefore I would be an agnostic B. Now, we apply this to God. Either there is a God or there is no God. We will say there is a God will be choice A, and there is no God will be choice B. First, let's look at choice B. There is no God. Choice B requires a few things. It requires you to accept either STE, which is space and time are eternal, or SCPNCEU, which is something can come from pure, you guys forget that word, pure, nothingness, and then create entire universes. This also is no false dichotomy because if you deny the uncreated creator, uh, which atheists do, it's a 100% concrete, undeniable fact that FTE or SCP and CEU are your only two options. Now, you can sit and try your very best to dream up any irrational, illogical thing you want. Um, I don't care what it is. Dream up anything. Think of any imaginary thing, imaginary thing, and undeniably, undoubtedly, it will fall under these two categories that I've provided. Now, first, there is no evidence for STE, 
And secondly, it's irrational and illogical due to the problems with infinite regress, among other things. Then we need to look at SCP and CEU. Something can come from pure nothingness and then create entire universes. First, let me say there is no evidence something can come from pure nothingness at all. And also, there is no evidence that a pinpoint of energy, singularity, or anything else for that matter, can create entire universes. Atheists like to bring up quantum mechanics and virtual particles as things which have been shown to come from nothingness, which may or not, may not be true, but they do not come from pure nothingness. And pure nothingness is what is required unless atheists, unless the atheist chooses STE. Um, then atheists like to say they have evidence that an entire universe can come from a singularity or pinpoint of energy. They bring up red shifts or microwave radiation background. But, but, this is only evidence that the universe is expanding and had a starting point. It's not evidence for what that starting point was. So not only is there no evidence that something can come from pure nothingness, and there is no evidence a singularity or pinpoint of energy can create an entire universe, but there is certainly no evidence something can come from pure nothingness and then create entire universes. So next we look at the logical side of this. Can zero plus zero ever equal one? Why? Why or why not? Then take it a step further and ask, is it logical or rational to think that zero plus zero can equal life, information, space, time, energy, and matter? The answer is clearly no. It's not rational or logical to believe that's possible. Pure nothingness only breeds more nothingness. So just like STE, SCP and CEU is not only illogical and irrational, but also there is no, none, none, no evidence for it. So we conclude that choice B, which is there is no God, is an illogical, irrational choice that there is no evidence for. So then we evaluate choice A, which is there is a God. First, do we have any evidence for choice A? This seems to be a hot topic. Well, we know there is positively no evidence for choice B. So it's true that any evidence at all, or even the smallest bit of evidence, would make choice A better than choice B. So what's the evidence? Well, we see information encoded in DNA, objective moral values, the life, birth, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have life on planet Earth, the precise fine-tuning of the entire universe, laws and constants, um, et cetera, et cetera. And you don't have to agree with any of the evidences that I can provide, but at the, end of the, at the end of the day, the fact is there is some evidence for choice A, and choice B has no evidence. But we are trying to figure out which way the honest agnostics should lean. So even if it were true, which it is not, that there was no evidence for choice A, and no evidence for choice B, choice A is still better because, as we've already concluded, choice B is irrational and illogical. Choice A, on the other hand, is completely logical and completely rational. When you see something, it's logical to conclude that it came from somewhere. When you hear something, it's logically to conclude that something created the sound. You see a universe with life, information, space, time, energy, matter, laws, and constants. It's rational to conclude that this could not have come about on its own from pure nothingness. Pure nothingness, once again, only breeds more nothingness. And zero plus zero never equals anything. But not only is choice A the logical and rational choice, and there is some evidence for choice A, but there are also some great arguments for choice A. Um, you can look at my arguments, other people's arguments, uh, cosmological argument, ontological argument, um, theological argument, the Elliot argument, you know, the list goes on and on. Um, but there are no good arguments at all for choice B. So the agnostic atheist, uh, I mean, sorry, the agnostic knows either there is a God or there is no God. There are no other choices, and one of the two choices is correct. There is no evidence for choice B. Choice B is irrational and illogical, and there are no good arguments for choice B. 
Now, for choice A, there is some evidence. Choice A is the rational and logical choice. And for choice A, we see some arguments that uh, are very hard to defeat. So, which way should the, the honest agnostic lean? Would it be intellectually honest, logical, or rational to ever lean towards choice B? No, never. They can sit on the fence all they want, but it's clear they can only lean in one direction. And that is towards choice A, the logical, rational choice, the choice that has some evidence. Agnostics. Agnostics. You only have two possible choices, man, and one of them is correct. You're sitting in the testing room and, and you're filling out a multiple choice uh, test and you know it's either A or B and you know one is correct. The other choice that is not correct um, has nothing to support it. So if you're going to sit on the fence, make sure, please make sure that you're going to lean the right way. Agnostic atheists are illogical, irrational, and don't care about evidence. Don't let them fool you. They don't, they don't care about it. Agnostic theists, listen, you're headed in the right direction. Please continue to pursue truth. You're on the right path. I'll see y'all soon. The AK, Chad Elliott, Creationism, The Origin of Life, Facebook page, The Atheist Killer, man. I'm back. I'll see y'all soon. Peace.